Hello everyone and welcome again to my weekly video update. My name is Naveen Agarwal and this is another video in my series on ISO 14971, Risk Management of Medical Devices. Recently, I talked about using a PHA or a Preliminary Hazard Analysis for Risk Analysis. Today, I'm going to talk about intended use and reasonably foreseeable misuse. Now, my interest in this was sparked by a recent news article that I read from the FDA and they're talking about revising a proposed rule on how they will evaluate intended use and that's a big topic in regulatory affairs. So I'll touch upon that briefly but in future I will discuss more about what they are thinking and how they look at things. In this video I'll talk about intended use reasonably foreseeable misuse from an ISO 14971 perspective. So let's look into this. Risk analysis is a requirement as described in clauses 5.2 through 5.5 in ISO 14971. And it starts with intended use and reasonably foreseeable misuse. That's where it starts because that's a context for the risk analysis. Then you have to talk about characteristics related to safety in the context of those intended uses and reasonably foreseeable misuses. Then you have to look at hazards and hazardous situations and harms. And we talked about that while using a PHA. And then you have to estimate the risk. So today we're going to talk about intended use and reasonably foreseeable misuse. So let's look at how ISO defines intended use. It's a use for which a product, process or service is intended according to the specifications, instructions and information provided by the manufacturer. So it's a pretty straightforward definition, right? What is the intended medical purpose? Is it a diagnostic device? Is it something that treats a long term disease or it mitigates symptoms? So whatever it is used for, you need to define that. What is the target population and user profile? Maybe there's a certain demographic, maybe certain age range. Uh, if it's meant for pediatric population, it needs to specify that. And what's the user profile? Are they experts or are they common consumers? Where in the body will the device be used? Is it an implant or is it just a disposable single use device? What is the use environment? Is it being used at home? in a hospital or let's say intensive care unit or let's say first responders are using it on the on the road when they are bringing the patient to the hospital. So what is the use environment we have to specify and what is the operating principle? So generally at a high level, how does it work? Okay, FDA looks at it completely differently because they are trying to determine your intent, not just what you have disclosed. So they look at a totality of evidence. So what they're saying is that the intended use of a product within the meaning of the FDNC Act is determined from its label, accompanying labeling, promotional claims, and any other relevant source. This is where there's a lot of debate about what they will look at to figure out what your intent is. For example, express claims and representations, what you explicitly say. Implied claims, what you imply. Maybe your product name is actually implying a use that you have not claimed as intended use. Product characteristics, design technical features. Let's say you are selling a vitamin supplement or a, an herb and you are using a pharmaceutical in ingredient for a therapeutic purpose. When you do that, you are actually trying to provide a therapeutic benefit, but not, not really disclosing that. So FDA will look at that as your intent. Maybe your device has certain technical features, uh, the way it is packaged or the way it is designed for certain ergonomic uh, features that can help people use in a different application that you have not disclosed as intended use. So they will look at your intent behind your intended use. Circumstances of the sale of distribution, uh, you are not explicitly promoting it for off-label, but you are providing large quantities of free product to physicians who you know are likely to prescribe it for off-label use. That would be an intent. So FDA will look at a variety of factors to determine if your intent is diverging from your claimed intended use. And that's, that's a regulatory issue. We are not gonna get, go too deep into this in this particular video. All right, so what's a reasonably foreseeable misuse from an ISO point of view? Use of a product or a system in a way not intended by the manufacturer but which can result from readily predictable human behavior. We need to anticipate that. Use error unintentional mistakes. People forget, people are distracted or they don't understand our directions and they can make some honest mistakes. That's use error. Or intentional acts of misuse. Maybe they think they don't need to read our directions. They know how to use it. They ignore it. That an intentional act. It's not because they are going to create harm 
or they know something bad will happen, they're just used to do, doing it something different. Or intentional use of the device for other medical applications, that's an off-label use. Doctor may decide to use your product for something else based on their medical judgment and that's perfectly fine. But that's something we need to anticipate. All right, here's the relationship with the IEC 62366. I think this is a pretty insightful, informative chart. I took it out from the IEC standard. Uh, from an IEC point of view, they look at normal use and correct use, but there's a use error. We talked about unintentional mistakes. And they also talk about abnormal use, and both use error and abnormal use are within the scope of ISO 14971. Abnormal use is intentional, deliberate decision or a way in, of use which is intentional and different from what you want them to do. Uh, a surgeon using your product for something different is an intentional use and that's abnormal use. Not that it's bad, it's just abnormal from the point of your definition. So we need to separate use error from abnormal use very clearly in our analysis. So here are some examples. Let's take the example of a face mask, very relevant for COVID-19, right? The purpose of the face mask is to prevent the spread of infection. So use by the public or healthcare professional is normal use for that purpose. But if the user unintentionally touches the outside surface of the mask because that can be contaminated, that's use error. Maybe they just forget. It's very normal human behavior. And even if the mask is there, we may touch it. User intentionally places the mask below the nose. And we see that quite frequently. And that's abnormal use. Or a surgeon decides to use this as a surgical mask in the operating theater. That's abnormal use. So on the surface, the, the idea of intended use and misuse may appear very simple and straightforward, but we have to dig deeper and really understand these terms in a fundamental way so that we can use them appropriately in our risk analysis. And that's the purpose of this video. So I hope you will find this useful. Once you define your intended use and anticipate reasonably foreseeable misuse, you can do your risk analysis appropriately and comprehensively, which is what the intent is. And of course, it is not a one-time process. It evolves over time as you learn more. You can work on it, but while understanding the difference between intended use and misuse can help you do that activity much better. So again, let me know if you have any further questions or comments. Drop me a comment or send me an email, contact me on LinkedIn, whichever works for you. And I'll be very happy to look into that. I really wanna thank you again for your continued interest and attention. And I hope all of you are staying safe. Thank you.